Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today you join me at Britain's newest car auction, it's G3 Bedford. So, as I say, we are at G3 Bedford. This is on the old site of Kazoo Wholesale. G3 bought this from them back in May, perhaps. We actually did a video on that, so if you haven't seen that, Toby will put a link somewhere on the screen here. And they have already, within weeks, they started doing auctions. They're not currently doing physical auctions, but they are running online auctions. And they've invited us to have a bit of a peek behind the curtain at what's being planned and how the system is running currently how you can, I think actually is a really good system. You can come in and check the cars, fire them up and look them over before you bid for them online. And we actually got a bit stuck in traffic coming here today because we're about three hours away from G3 Bedford, which is closer for us because G3 Castleford, their kind of flagship original site is four hours away. I did put a proxy bid in on a car and we have won it on a, well, we've got it provisionally. We were the highest bidder, but we don't know if we've won it yet. So we'll check that out in a minute and by the end of the video hopefully we'll know whether we've won it or not but I thought we'd a have a look at the site see where everything is see how big this place is and we'll have a look at some of the stock that's here as well and then we'll have a look at where the lanes might be and how the physical auctions might work here if you look at the aerial shot of this place we've got the main building in the middle which is where they've got all the admin offices where you collect your keys and all that sort of stuff as well as where they are currently doing their car vehicle inspections and take the photographs but that may well change into the actual auction hall itself over in the corner by the entrance you've got where they are bringing in new entries that are being parked ready to go through the system there's also a really nice big customer car park at the front as well so if you are coming without a trailer or without a recovery truck and you just need to park up and come check the cars out, there is plenty of space for you to park. Around the entire back of the site, you can see it's all stock that is available and will be coming for future upcoming auctions. So you can come check those out. You can always keep an eye on the site. And in fact, if you're turning up here to look at a sale that's running today or tomorrow, you can check out and see if there's anything there that kind of piques your interest and might be of interest for upcoming sales. They've got a big valenting bay around the back of the main building as well, which is where they are cleaning the cars before they go through to get their photographs and ready to go through and be auctioned off. And then in between all that in the middle is where they are lining up all the cars ready to go through an auction. What I really like is they've still got the flags out for all the different vendors. They are setting this up each morning before a sale as if it, they were going to roll out of here and go through a hall to be bid on. So if you know there's some cars of interest to you, like I've got, I've got my catalog here and i've put a few of these in my watch list including this red range rover we all know my dad jeff is still after a full fat range rover even if the registration does say gammon so you can still come down and walk through and check them in fact they leave the keys there so if you want to you can get in the car you can fire it up you can pop the bonnet you can do that with any of the cars if there's a car that's going through next week it's a car you've been looking for for ages but they've got a really common problem that you can easily spot you can pop down here sit in the car fire it up you can do what you want just to kind of alleviate any worries that this is purely online at the moment, you actually get to do more than you would normally. So you can pop down here, fire it up, sit in it, rev it up, listen to it, make sure you're happy with it before you bid on it, which in my opinion is better than just watching it drive into an auction hall and drive back out again. So as we walk down through, Sarah, who is our lovely contact buyer services uh, person on site here, said that they will run from the left to the right as they are numbered. And you'll see on all the windows, they have still got all their information sheets as well. So. You don't necessarily have to have done your research beforehand. You can turn up and walk around and say, do you know what? I could do with a Fiat 500 on my forecourt and there is one. And you can check out all the information on the screen. What we're looking for now though, is a car that I have provisionally won uh, for I think, well, I think my maximum bid was 3,800, 3,900. And if I win it, I think it's an absolute bargain. It should be down here at the front because it was lot number five. Let's go and have a look. Conveniently, here it is at the front with its Northern Irish number plate on. It's a BMW 730D. It's 2013 model, this one. It is an SE. Obviously, it's in whatever this silver is. I can never remember. It might even be, it might even call it a blue. But that would be a lot of car for the sort of 4,000 ish pounds I would have paid for it if we get it. And the only reason I really liked the idea of this was because I thought all oh, the miles we're doing, 160 we've done today, we'll be doing 160 back. This would be lovely. 
to drive. It's got the V5. We didn't bring in a trade place today because we didn't really intend to buy anything, but you know, we could always tax it to get it back if needs be. It's automatic. It uh, has MOT until October this year. It's on 114,000 miles. I really like the idea because it's only 210 pounds to tax for the year. And it does like 60 miles per gallon on the motorway from a three litre. And it still manages not to 60 in 6.1 seconds. Sounds pretty good to me. So there is our key, we can fire this up. And if it sounds awful now, when we've won it on a provisional and they say we want a little bit more money, I can say, no thanks. We've got rear privacy glass for a start. Nice ash interior trim. All the electric windows work. We don't have rear blinds by the looks of it, which is a shame, that is an option on these. Sounds okay for a three litre BMW on 115,000 miles. Is the aircon working? That's probably what would make me decide whether I actually want to drive this back or not. But we've got nice sat nav, cruise control. I think this should have been of this generation. Well, I can't see any switches for it, the lane deviation and that sort of stuff. We've got heated seats. Wonder what we've got in the back, that would be Oh yeah, the aircon's nice and cold. We've got two keys. The one, oh, that's interesting. There's a thing here that's uh, G3's kind of record. Let's turn that off. Of when a car arrives with them. And it's saying, completed on arrival, sat nav media, no. So it might need a disc. Service history, yes. But on the listing, it said no. So I wouldn't bank on there being service history, but there might be. Either way, I bet we could find a decent amount. Let's have a quick look in the back because, quite frankly, that's where I'd prefer to journey. Have we got heated seats in the rear? No, we don't, but we do have Jules' own climate control in the back. Do you know what? I might have to get in and just decide whether I would be comfortable in the back here. Oh, yeah. I could live with that. What's the armrest like? Oh, delightful. Well, if we win it, I will be very happy indeed. What I will say with that as well is that if I wasn't interested in it for myself, then it has a retail value of £8,000. It's not a hugely in-demand car. I think it was about 10 out of 100 desirability. But I still don't think we'd have too much trouble selling it, especially if we've got a big margin. We could sell it off you know, a little bit cheaper, couldn't we? Let's have a look at number two, because I think number two was also in my watch list, or potentially... But another good reason for turning up and looking in person would be this. It's a 430 or 435D X-Drive, I think. 430 X-Drive Grand Sport Coupe. So it's a three litre, it's on 88,000 miles, and it's come from Zopa. Now, it's quite a cool looking car if you ask me. I like a BMW, obviously, that's why I've been on the 7 Series. And if you look at that, with a nice kind of anthracite wheels, all the black bits, it's got the shadow pack type stuff on it, all the trims are black. Very nice indeed. But, come around this side. If you didn't do your research properly and check all the pictures, you might have missed something a bit like that. And then you'd be very upset, wouldn't you? So there definitely still is an element of, it's always good to come and check it yourself. I did have this in the watch list as well, but we missed that. Uh, Nissan Micra IG Tecna, 900cc, 51,000 miles. It's, you know, quite sort of average traffic, but it's got the nice little bits on it. It's a nice example. All the orange bits, I think, would really help sell that well. So that's those. Let's go and have a look at lot number 51, because I think that's the next one on our list. And then we'll work our way through. So I've got, got a handful of cars I would be interested in. Do you know what? I've never been a massive fan of X5s. I just think they age really badly. Although a lot of people would disagree with me, I'm sure. But obviously the nice ones, the newer ones look nice. But I just think the old ones... Oh, there's something we're going to check out in a minute, for sure. That's very interesting. So what have we got? I think this is a 640D Coupe, uh, 106,000 miles. It's got no V5 and it has got an expired MOT. So yeah, it's probably not the best one to pick. But if you knew these and you were confident with them, or if you had someone who wanted one, then it'd be great news because you would get this very cheaply, I would have thought. And it's a properly smart thing. We did have one of these in stock before, although this looks like it could be an M Sport one. I don't know about the badge, it's a bit suspect, but 
just the suspension and wheels look like it is. We had an SE version before, which was incredibly comfortable, um, but just like the performance on them is like incredible, but they're just not that desirable. For some reason, they're just not everyone's out there looking for a three litre twin turbo diesel Grand Coupe Tourer. So we'll move on to whatever the next thing is. So what I actually do like, as I've probably said this in another video, but with G3, so when you get your list of cars that you've tracked, you do just get all the pictures, but what you can do is generate their actual live thing and it will go through, give you all the lot numbers and you go through, it tells you which lane. I was looking for a red Range Rover Sport. It's not, it's in the red lane. Um, so yeah, that will be it over there. This one's higher mileage, I think. What is it? 132,000 miles. So probably better avoided. Well, especially as the suspension looks a little bit suspect. Yeah, I've got enough problem Range Rovers to be honest at the moment, but let's have a look at this thing. Infinity, what is it? Q60, I think. Yeah, Infinity Q60 convertible. You don't see many of them, do you? It's quite cool inside, actually. Have a look in there, Tobes. Look at the size of the Bose speaker on the side of the headrest. So it's come from Specialist Motor Finance, 61,000 miles. It's a 3.7. I don't know if it's turbo or not. I don't know anything about these. Got an MOT for about another month. This is the sort of thing, if you're into your Japanese stuff and you know the market, you would do really well out of this because this won't sell for a lot, you know, not as much as it should do in an auction. It's in really nice condition. It'd be a really cool thing, but yeah, it's a bit too specialist for me, I think. I'll tell you what we do before we look at the next car. Let's go and have a look at some of the commercials because I happen to know that you can get an absolute bargain uh, through G3 with their commercials. It doesn't seem like a huge amount of people are buying their commercials that are, are available. So the ones that I've watched seem to be like really behind market, but I think they've probably got some quite nice stuff. Nice little, what is this? A Ford Courier, I think. This isn't a Connect, is it? Transit Courier, if you're after a little van. A decent little thing if you need a work van. The thing I really like about commercials is they just clean up really easily. So for me personally, I would have these wheel trims off and spray up the wheels, silver, even if you do it like, so they look like this basically. Go back to a nice original looking commercial, like it's, you know, like it's how it's come off the factory line. I know some people like wheel trims, they want to make it look like alloys. Don't, it looks rubbish. Just get the wheels sprayed up and make them look better. Vauxhall Vivaro, I've owned a lot of these on my plumbing business over the years. They've always done me quite well. Peugeot Partner. This is another Vivaro, isn't it? But it's a newer generation to that. Never had one of these, I have to say. These are, I think, just a little 1.6. It's weird, they've gone for this like mid-size van, which, yeah. They've gone for more of these sort of mid-size vans, these manufacturers, rather than the car-derived vans. Remember, you just have all the Astra vans? They're, they're worth fortune now because they just don't make a car-derived van anymore. People loved having like an Astra van or something because they could save the VAT by putting it through the business. They didn't have to pay as much tax and they still had a nice estate car, basically. Got a cool Navara, MP300, I think this one. That's like ours, except automatic. It's nice being black on black on black. But yeah, there's absolutely loads of panel vans, isn't there? If you sell vans, just have a look at your G3. I mean. I'm not getting paid if you do, but I just honestly think you've got a really good market or supply of commercials. And um, one thing worth pointing, which they told me as we're getting here, they're now running a deal from the Bedford site. You get 20% off your transport fees as well compared to what you would from Castleford. And if you were to do a comparison on the buyer's fees on say a 15 grand vehicle, G3 are £150 lower than anyone else, they tell me. I guess on commensurate, similar sort of buying tiers. But I can believe it. Right, let's go and find that next car. Number 87 is a Jeep Renegade. That'll be that there. A lot of people hate these, but I bet you it's about 99 out of 100 for desirability on Auto Trader. Being this nice grey with all the black bits and everything on it, that'll be really popular. It's got the V5, it's on 25,000 miles. It's got an X for roof electrics. So we should pop in and check that out. But otherwise, all looks good. MOT until March next year. It says zero services, but then it's only on 25,000 miles. I mean, it wouldn't put me off as far as buying it for stock. 
I don't really know what having zero on there means. They might have uh, something in there, you never know. So should we fire it up? What is this? It's a, I think it's the 1.6. Oh, it's a petrol. That's good news. Oh, it's so it's a thousand cc. So I wonder if this is a twin air, which mm, they're good engines. So that's twin air, if you don't know, is a twin two cylinder engine that Fiat make. It just, it sounds awful, but they're actually quite sprightly. They actually go quite well on the motorway. You can keep a decent speed, but yeah, they just sound like they're broken even when they're not. This is what they mean by the broken roof electrics. We are missing our blind. Now, how big of a job that is to fix, I don't know. I think you'd have to budget a thousand pounds. Luckily, we have got a Fiat dealer close to us, so they'd be able to get the parts and do it quite easily. It's very funky in here. It's got a really nice screen. It all has got that kind of rugged, cool off-road look. Very nice screen in the middle, lane deviation, all that sort of stuff. Electric windows all around. We'll have a look at the figures for this. We might put a proxy bid in, but I think we need to be a thousand behind what we would normally want to pay. Just so that we can allow for getting that blind fixed because what year is this? A 20 plate, I guarantee you a blind mechanism and whatever, it's not going to be cheap. We'll run this through Auto Trader Portal and get an idea of what we could realistically sell it for. You have to apologise me looking like a hot mess, it is very warm out here today. Right, let's have a look. So it tells us retail £14,000 basically, trade 11300 Let's have a look at retail check, see if I'm right, if it really is that high on desirability. No. I'm completely wrong, it's 30 out of 100. I wonder if that's because it's a petrol, not a diesel, which is what we've had before. We've always had the multi-jets before. I still think it'd be quite popular where we are, especially being a night eagle. But you certainly don't want to go overpaying for it. If we wanted a £3,000 margin, the maximum we should pay all in is £11,000. I would be getting it transported. We would have fees, obviously, and we would also need to fix the roof. So let's have a little look at what it says cap below is for this so cap below is 10. uh so what did i say we wanted to get it for that's what we want to get it for about really as i say i didn't come here with the intention of buying anything but do i really want to buy work i don't know we'll think on it for a minute we've got a little while before the next one comes around i think if i would i'd put a nine thousand pound bid in and see if see if we got lucky the next one is the red range rover that we saw at the front now this this is a really good one to be able to get into, fire it up and listen to it and see if it smokes or anything like that. And I might even send my dad a message and say, would you be interested in this one? He does like a bright colour. I think he would really like red. But also the other benefit is he would really like a deployable tow bar. So we can have a look in the boot, see if it actually does have one or not. Bit of damage on this corner, spotting straight away and around the boots. They've kind of bumped into something there. Let's pop the boot and see if we've got the tow bar first and foremost. We do. He's gonna be all over this. So I will now deploy said electric tow bar for you. That is a definite plus. I saved a lot of money getting that done or even worse having a fixed one on there so it's on show the whole time it looks quite tidy all the way around it is a three litre and ideally we'd have the 4.4 v8 but beggars can't be choosers i suppose originally came from castle motors so shout out to them castle motors who say way above the rest and put you a picture of a helicopter so i don't know what that means That's pretty decent for a three litre. Service history, yes. Two keys, sat nav media, no. I, I wonder if they're just not checking, to be honest. It's got the dual screen, so we could probably have a bit of TV on here now. Should we check that out? Digital TV. 
It's gone straight to Al Jazeera. Got the panoramic roof, black interior, heated and cooled front and rear seats. You're not getting any. Uh, oh. Good to have you with us in the studio. Just tell our viewers. There we are. BBC News. We can keep up to current affairs in our Range Rover Sport with the Meridian Towns. I got a feeling this was about 16 grand cap average, which falls well within his budget. So we could be onto a winner with this. Heated steering wheel, cruise control, all the lane deviation, all that sort of stuff. Oh, it doesn't have deployable side steps though. That will be a, that might be a, a deal killer for him. Let's uh, let's send him a quick WhatsApp. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to fire it up again or do the air suspension, just make sure that's okay. Look at the state of me, this is embarrassing. It's so hot out here. It's, you know it's hot when Toby's taking his hoodie off. There's normally he's like in his Arctic battle gear. Let's do a quick auto trader check on it. The actual cap retail is just over 15,000. What a lot of car for that, if you could get it for that. Let's have a look what it is retail. This I, this won't have a very high retail rating at all. I don't think I've even said the mileage yet, have I? It's not a great deal for one of these. It is 73,974. Retail is 23,000. Retail rating is 25 out of 100, so actually really not bad. And it says it's got higher demand than normal. That is the live market condition. If you got this for, let's say you bid 16 and a half, it's Work it a bit, maybe a bit more. Let's say 16 and a half all in. That would give you over six and a half thousand pound margin, should he not want it. So I think what I'll do is stick a bid on it anyway. So while we're here, let's say I'm gonna put a bit of 16 in. That's added. We'll find out, see if we win that. We'll give him a little, I think it's worth calling him. We'll just buy it. And then once he sees it, he'll fall in love with it. Simple as that. There's a nice 8 Series back here. This, some other lads are having a look at. Wouldn't be for me, it'd be too expensive. It's about 25 grand, but that is a very cool car, isn't it? Should we go and have a look at the uh, Mini Cooper S as well? Uh, got the original shock absorbers if you want them. Oh, it's all bloody... My dad's asking about the spec, so... Hello, you're right. Yes, fine. Good, good, good. Uh, probably easier just to call you. So uh, it looks nice. It needs a bumper corner spraying. Um, yeah. It's only the three litre, not the four point four, which is probably ideally what you'd want. But yeah. Um, the only thing it hasn't got that you'd want is deployable side steps. But it has got a deployable tow bar. It's got TV, heated, cooled seats, pan roof, um, black leather interior, two key service history. Yeah. But I've put a bid on it anyway because I'll buy it anyway, regardless. So um, I, I do like it. Yeah, it's smart. I don't know what it would take to get deployable steps on. I suppose you could have fixed ones, but. Well, fixed ones would do, wouldn't they? Because the doors wide and they open and stay out, don't they? So it's. Um... Yeah. And it sounds sweet for a three litre. So um, it's got a. It's got a cap clean price of about 15 grand. I've put one in for 16 because it's worth 23 out. Yeah, well, I'm happy a bit more than that, if you like. All right, well, you tell me what you want me to put in. It's probably uh, probably 500 of fees and then, you know, another 200, 250 to get it delivered because I can't bring it back today, probably. Yeah, I'll go 17 then or something like that. Okay, no worries. I will do that now. Thank you very much. No. It's, uh, it's... Is it that boot opener? Electronic? Yeah, that's electric, yeah. Oh, that's right. And okay, then... Mate. Uh, yeah, alright, I will let you know. It's about 60, 70 lots away, so I'll know by an hour. Okay, bud. Alright, see you later. Bye. Right. I thought he'd like it. He's feeling a bit more brave than I am. Well, he wants one specifically for himself, so. Now, I would normally be surprised if we didn't get that, but I don't know. Maybe since me making all these Range Rover videos, the prices of them seem to have been going higher and higher in auction, but. You know, like I say, if we get that for 17 plus the fees, 
we'd now be looking at what about five grand margin so not to be sneezed at is it right should we we've seen basically all the cars we want to see the lads are over there having a look at a cooper s that we were looking at but it's got a roll cage in the back it's got a lot of shock absorbers in it from where it's obviously been modified um so it's just not one for me i'm not interested in it we'll leave that but have a wander around this massive site just see if there's anything in particular that's interesting coming up in the future weeks because i can make a note of it and keep an eye out for it nice s3 saloon i think these look really really smart in a saloon but i would like the rs3 more i think because it's got a really really nice five cylinder sound what have we got here cla i think this is a cla i could be wrong i don't know it's it's turbo formatic so oh it'll turn me on the back probably won't it yeah cla 35 that's quite cool, isn't it? I never used to be a Mercedes fan, but... All that open? No, it's locked. Have a quick look in there at all the... That massive LED dashboard and those vents. It's very, very cool. Full fat Range Rover over there, but it's black, so that wouldn't be any good for my dad. Do you know what? It's too hot to walk around here, out here in the gravel. It's a bit of a sun trap. If you're looking for a tan, it's the place to come. Let's... um. Have a quick look at the valeting bay and then we'll have a look inside see where they're doing their inspections and photographs now and where potentially i guess the logical place would be for the auction hall lanes to go down staffed it's a strange thing to get excited over but this valeting bay is quite cool isn't it i mean i just like the swingy thingies like this we could do with this at bear motors obviously it wouldn't be as big but Oh, I mean, it's not much of interest to you. I mean, if you buy a car from here, this is where it'd probably get cleaned, but that's about as exciting as it gets, I suppose. So, from what I can understand, from what Sarah told me, um, I think the cars probably come down here in the back of the building where they go through and start getting their inspections and then wait to go and have pictures taken. So, while well, they obviously had mechanical work, well, this would have been body shop wheels and stuff, I guess but they're obviously using it for valeting at the minute. We've got a chap over there taking stickers off a new Euro car parts van, the steamer, which I've not seen done before. And then obviously this is the main hall where they are doing their inspections currently. So they'll be taking, you know, detailed photos of the cars, whether it's got damage on wheels, seats, things like that. They're doing that in here, which actually is a really nice big space. They're saying it's nice having this big space. So if they were to lose that in order to put two lanes in here, it would be a shame, but they might extend off the side. Time will tell, I guess, but I mean, it would make a pretty incredible auction. Can you imagine lines of cars coming through here? They could have them queued up, no doubt. I'm a little bit confused because there is a golf caddy here that's got VIP T1 written on it, but it wasn't available when I arrived. So can't really call itself the VIP car. Right, this is their state of the art turntable and photo area. This is the MV of G3 Castleford, their main site, because Despite its, you know, underwhelming appearance on the whole, really, it's basically like some stage scaffolding, sheets and a couple of light boxes. The pictures that come out of this thing are really nice. Toby, you probably put some on the screen now. We could do with this at Barrow Motors, to be honest. Um, obviously, you drive your car in. You can see me on the screen over there, actually. I wonder if they could get me doing like a music video type thing. Car spins round, drive back out again. I guess speed and consistency is of the key when it comes to this sort of stuff. Then they normally have an Insta 360 they put inside so you can get 360 degree pictures of the interior as well. So you can kind of drag it around and zoom in on the areas that you're most interested in. We, I think, have covered most things other than reception, where you come in and the admin offices and out the front so if we wander around the front we'll have a look at there show you where you drive into this place how you get in and out then we'll give it a little while see if we win that range rover and see if we've won the 730d and we think we might be very very close to getting it so obviously this is where you come in and out they've got some pretty seriously heavy duty gates on here so take that into consideration crims before you come down here it would seem like if you're coming in to collect cars you can drive in they let you pull in and you can load up in here so you've got space to do that. So those of you who saw my previous video when you said this site was, you know, announcing this site, you would have seen it looked a little bit different on the outside from their 3D render that they had. So 
obviously there's still a bit of work to be done. They've obviously done inside in the reception, they've got all their branding up and everything, but there are still plans to completely change the look of this building. And someone even whispered that, you know, eventually in the long-term plan, this building may go completely and they may build something completely different, completely, you know, designed to purpose. But regardless of how it's currently looking, the really good thing I like about G3 is everything just seems really well organized. The management here is really good. Even Macaulay, when he was working for us and he would come here and collect, he would just say that G3, they're just, it's, it's always really well organized. They've got their QR codes for scanning to come in and collect your cars. And everything just seems to work, which is rarer than you'd think, really. So, as I said, this is where all the new arrivals are coming in. And again, loads of commercials. It looks like they've just had in a fleet job of Euro car parts vans. That looks very much like that what it is. That's what the chap was taking stickers off of inside. These, especially when they've got them in on a fleet like this, go so, so cheap. So I'll be keeping an eye out for them when they go through as well. I think you could, you could have yourself an absolute bargain. These things go so cheap and they don't take up any more space on your forecourt than the car does. Sometimes be worth having a couple of commercials. I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, I'm gonna go and grab myself a drink. They did offer us a nice cup of tea. And then we'll wait till, maybe we'll watch the auction live as it goes through, just in case I wanna throw in an extra bid on that Range Rover. Then we'll come back in. We'll find out if we've won both of them and we'll check out the reception. <laughs> You're currently on a lovely BMW 7 Series, 730D. That's right, yeah. Your bid, um, let me just get back to my cap screen as well. So your bid's currently at 38. Okay. Um, with a reserve of 43, I can sell it at 4 grand. Uh, go on then. 4 grand, perfect. Yeah. No worries, also, I'll get that invoice back to you. Thank you for that. No worries, stay slot, Liam. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Joe, take care. Bye, bye. 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 Bolt it. Uh, uh, I think Joe wants this. I get an inkling. Uh, just an inkling. He wants this. Uh, I'm going to kick it off at 12.8. That's your starting bid. 12.8, uh, you're opening bid, guys. 12,800 pound, but I got 12.8, but I got 12.8, you bid. At 12.8. Uh, 12,800, but I got 12.9, but I got 13. 1, 2, 13, 2 bid. 13, 2 to bid. 13, 4. 13, 6. 13, 6 to bid. 13, 8. On sale we go. 1380 bid, 14 down. 14 dollar bid, 14 dollar bid, 14 bid. 14 6. Still going everybody. 14 8. 14 8 you bid, 15 down. 15 dollar bid, 15 dollar bid, 15 on bid. 15 2. 15 2 to bid. Keep going M if you want it. 15 2 to bid. Sounds a lot more, doesn't it? 15 2 bid, I got Jay's bid. At 15 2 to bid. He hasn't done 15 3, but 15 4 straight back at you, Mel. 15 4 a bit. Have a good day, Jamie. 15 5, thank you for being online, sir. 15 6. 15 6 a bit. That'll be Jamie 15, 7, 15 8. 15 8 a bit. 15 thousand eight a pound, but a 15 8, but a 15 9. 16 thousand. 16 thousand a bit. 16 thousand a bit, a bit, a bit, 16 thousand a bit, 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 a Mel, get out at 16 2. I'm going to sell it with you. 3, 4. 16 4 a bit. Still going, everybody. Great battle, this. At 16 4 a bit. At 16, someone else really 16, wants it. 16 6. 16 6 a bit. We're at 16 6. Don't want to miss you, M. Not at this price. At 16 6 a bit. But I'm going to sell it now. Once, twice, she's going at 16 6. That's gone. Well played, Joe. There we are. That's a 6 and a 17. Two cars for. Father will be happy. I'm going to grab my laptop out while we're here. We'll pay for the 7 Series. When we get the paperwork, I'll tax it. And then. Oh, oh. The auctions are still rolling away on my phone. So, overall, a very successful day here at Bedford. Like I said about being really simple with G3, I've paid them via bank transfer. As soon as they mark that as paid, which took all of about three minutes. Uh, you can then book in your booking. I was able to book one for in five minutes time. We use the little QR code and we'll drive it straight out of here. Right, so there we have it. That is my 730D, my new limousine. We'll see how that is. Got it out, 4,000, so it owes me about 4,400 pounds all in. So I think it's an absolute bargain for a three litre seven series. Yeah, I'm looking forward to driving it back, seeing how, it, how nice it is and whether I decide I'm gonna keep it. And that is just one of two cars that we bought today. We also bought that really nice red Range Rover as well. My dad's going to be very happy on that. A video on this 
and the Red Range Rover will be coming, so keep an eye out for those. Make sure you're subscribed, not only for that reason, but also because we're giving away a £2,000 Tag Heuer watch very, very soon. In fact, at the time of making this video, we are 1,000 subscribers away from reaching 75,000, which is when I will be giving away this watch at complete random. And not just that, but announcing the next competition for getting us to 100,000. A massive thank you to G3 for having us here at Bedford and letting us have free reign to come and check the site out and kind of give us a peace of mind as well as you guys some peace of mind when it comes to buying from here bit of a different one for us today but if you've enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up and that is it really thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time